Welcome to lecture 57, Passing Objects to Methods. In previous lectures, I talked about how classes are reference types and structures are value types, or basically basic data types, like integers, doubles, bools, those are value types. When you pass a value type into a function, it gets passed by value, or basically it gets passed by copy. That, that function gets just the value of whatever it is, and any changes it makes to it inside of that function does not affect the original variable. However, with classes or reference types, when you pass an object or reference type to a function, it gets passed by reference. Any changes that get made in that function will directly affect that class. So we, we looked at this with integers and arrays, because I told you an array is a type of class, so it is a reference type, and we saw it. All I want to do in this quick lecture is just show you how it works with objects or classes as well. If you pass a, an object to a function, it will have the same exact result. Any changes you make to it inside that function, it will uh, affect the original variable. So that's what I want to look at. So in this lecture let's go ahead and create a simple class we'll make a class called person the person is just going to have a name and age really simple so we go to add new item class i'm going to call it the class person it's going to be really basic we're going to say private string name private int age we'll make a constructor public person string name int age this dot name equals name this dot age equals age so we have the name and the age and then I'll make uh, get and sets for them both so I'm going to make a basic property so I'm going to pay I'm going to say public string name get return name and set equals name equals value public int age, return age, set age equals value. Okay, so I had this name and age properties. Now I could use auto implemented properties. I would then just take away these private pieces of data if I wanted to because this is basically an auto implemented property. We're not doing anything special. So I, I just created this just so that you can see it again. Anyway, so we have this basic class called person. Let's go ahead and create a person. We'll say person p1 equals new person. His name is Jesse, and his age is 20. So we have our person. All I want to demonstrate in this is when we have a function that maybe manipulates this data, it affects the original. So in the main right now, we'll go ahead and print the original name and age. So I'm going to say console.write line p1 dot name. And we'll use placeholders actually. We'll say name, comma age. And we'll pass in p1.name, p1.age. So this is the call before. So we'll also add before to it. Before. And then we'll do an after. We'll say after, which also prints the same information, but after the function call. Now we'll make that function call. Now we're in main again, or we're in, and we're in program. So we have to make it static. So we're going to say public void, public static void. I'll say change person, and it takes in a person p1. So this is the first thing that's a little bit different. We've only really seen um, functions taking in a, a piece of data, like an integer, double, things like that. In this case, it's taking in a person, but it works the same way. It's just, okay, You have in order to use this function, you need to give me a person. So we have to give it p1 because that is a type of person. So we have person. Now inside of a change person, we're going to manipulate it. We're going to change its name and its age. I'm going to set its name, p1.name, equals to Jeff. So I'm changing it to Jeff. I'm changing p1.age to 50. So I changed, I manipulated the data. And then after, I want to see if it actually changed back in main. So I'm going to call the function. I'm going to say change person passing in p1. So this should manipulate the data. And let's see what happens. So as you can see, it says before Jesse 20 and after Jeff 50. So the original piece of data, that P1, did get changed by this function. It got changed because P1 is a reference type. It passes in the reference or the memory location of P1 
so that any changes you make to it in that function, it accesses the same exact memory location that is being used for main. So they both share the same memory location. Any changes you make to that will affect anyone who's using it. This works the same way where if I did another change down here, so I'll do another change. If I say person P2 equals P1, because this is reference type data, P2 is pointing at P1, the same exact place in memory. So if any changes I make to P2, if I change P2's name to test, and then I do the print again, so I want to say after alter 2, after the second alter, what, what is it? As you can see, it also says 2 on the original P1. I changed P2's name, but it changed P1 because they're both pointing at the same place in memory. That's the whole thing with that. They're both pointing to the same place in memory. So all I wanted to really demonstrate in this lecture was that, that when you pass a reference type to a function, it gets passed by reference, and any changes you make to it affects that original class. Anytime you pass um, the reference of a, a class to something, now those two pieces of data point at the same place. Any changes you make to either variable will affect the same same exact data because they all are the same data.